All right, this is hitting the lateral target part one. There's going to be two examples in here. And what the scenario is, is we have, say, like a little cannon. I want to know what angle to fire it at and what velocity it should come out of the cannon in order to be in the air for 10 seconds, come down and hit a target. If I know the target's 15 meters away, and like I said, it's in the air for 10 seconds. So what we need to do is, um, it's going to happen in a few steps. First step, I need to know the individual components as it's fired. So I want to know how much of this motion is actually forward motion, and how much of this motion is actually upward motion using these formulas. Once I know those, I can solve for the resultant velocity using the Pythagorean theorem. And then finally, you can solve for your angle with Sokotoa. So let's do our Vx and our Vy first. It turns out velocity in the x is always really easy. Velocity in the x is just change in distance over change in time because forward motion is constant. So it's 15 divided by 10 equals 1.5 meters per second. So this is 1.5. Velocity upward is a little bit harder. We have to pick from these formulas and which one will tell them we're looking for, our, this is our initial velocity. So which one of these formulas can we use? We can't use this one because we don't know height. Nor can we use this one because we don't know height. So these two are gone. We can use this one, but we need to know a special circumstance when you're firing things upward. We can find initial velocity. We know acceleration. We only know final velocity if we consider the flight of the projectile only to the top, where the final velocity is zero. Solve for the initial velocity. Acceleration equals negative 9.8, and time is half, because it's only to the top. So you have to remember to cut the time in half. So zero equals velocity initial plus negative 9.8 times 5. Do some algebra and you get 9.8 times 5 equals velocity initial. This equals 49. So we've solved for velocity initial. We've solved for velocity final. And now let's solve for our angle and our launch velocity. So we've got this nice scenario here. And what we really have is we have an upward velocity of 49, a side to side velocity of 1.5. This is going way higher than it is far. And now we can use Pythagorean to find the hypotenuse, which is our resultant velocity. 49 squared plus 1.5 squared. And then we add and square root all that. We do some math. Velocity resultant equals 49.02 meters per second. So we found our launch velocity. The next thing we want to find right here is our angle. So we can use sine equals opposite over hypotenuse. Cosine equals adjacent over hypotenuse or tangent equals opposite over adjacent. We know all three sides, so we can pick any one. So if I do tangent theta equals 49 divided by 1.5, angle equals this inverse tangent button, or 49, 1.5. And this equals 88. 0.2 degrees. 
And then there's a little firing program up on my website where you can put the target 15 meters away, enter in your data, and check if it works and comes down and hits your target. We did this in class. It worked every time. Now let's go to part two. Now we're going to know the opposite. What if we know our launch velocities and our angle? We'll call this 30 degrees. We'll call the velocity 20 meters per second. Where's the target going to be? What distance will this cover? And it's the same thing, only backwards. So step one. Solve for the initial y velocity upward. Step two, solve for flight time. Step three, solve for velocity in the x. And then step four, solve for your displacement in the x. So let's go through them. I have this nice little triangle. I want to know, this is going to be my velocity in the y, and this component right here will be my velocity in the x. So I know the angle, I know theta equals 30, I know the hypotenuse equals 20, this one right here, and so velocity y is the opposite. I need to find that. So which one's opposite in hypotenuse? That's sine. Sine theta equals opposite over hypotenuse. And now let's solve for it. Sine 30 equals opposite over 20. Move this over here. 20 sine 30 equals what we want to know. And this is where you need to figure out your calculator. Let's see how mine works. Thirty sine, perfect. So some you have to push sine first. Some you have to push um, the thirty first. Times two zero equals ten. So I know the initial velocity upward is 10 meters per second. Check. We can do the same thing now for solving for x, only it's going to be cosine angle equals adjacent over 20. So cosine 30, move the 20 over here, equals the adjacent side. 30 cosine times 20, 17.3. So I know this much is 17.3. Now let's do flight time. We have to use our initial velocity to find flight time. We know our velocity in the y upward is 10 meters per second. We know acceleration is negative 9.8. We know our velocity at the top equals zero. We need to find time. We use this formula. Velocity equals velocity initial plus at. Zero equals 10 plus negative 9.8 times time. Negative 10 equals negative 9.8 times time. Divide. Divide little more than 1. 1.01, I think. 1.02. So I know flight time equals 1.02 seconds. That's to the top. So we need to double it. 2.04 seconds. That's the mistake people make on this one. We only found half the flight time. We only found it to the time to the top. So the actual time is 2.04 seconds. 
Now to find our change in distance, velocity in the x equals what we want over time. 17.3, the forward velocity, equals what we want over 2.04. 2.04 times 17.3 equals our answer. That's 34.6 meters. So we will hit a target that far away given this number. Those are the two types of problems you're going to see on a quiz on Monday.